Okay. Hey, and welcome, everyone. Uh, so my name is Lisa Bermudez, and welcome to this Seven Chakras and Essential Oils class. So I'm really super grateful to be here from four with <laughs> Wisdom of the Sages. If you uh, found this class through some other way or just through, uh, I, I don't know if, I don't know how you found it, but if you did find it, uh, you're not familiar with Wisdom of the Sages. Uh, it's a really amazing podcast that goes through the Bhagavatam each day. I'm going to just put the, the link for that in the chat here in case you're maybe not familiar with Wisdom of the Sages. And it's a beautiful podcast that is run by two of my amazing friends and teachers, uh, Raghunath and Kastuba Das. Super awesome people, um, super fun people also. So uh, check that out if you haven't already checked that out. If I don't already know you, my name's Lisa Bermudez and uh, I'm a yoga teacher, an Ayurveda wellness coach, uh, yoga teacher trainer. I also am really obsessed with and study essential oils. <laughs> so some of you may have been on this essential oil journey with me for the, the offerings that I put out with Wisdom of the Sages and just you know, on my own. And uh, so thank you for continuing with that. If you've been here for a while, if you're new, welcome. And I'm glad that you found your way here. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. So, um, all right. So I won't really see you all once I start the share. So if anyone does have questions or anything like that, please just um, just unmute. And if I don't, if you're putting it in the chat and I'm just like not seeing it, I'm sometimes, sometimes can't see things once they're in the chat. Alrighty. So uh, this workshop was something that I really was inspired to do because I really do love teaching and studying the chakras and the chakras, if you are or aren't familiar with the, the seven chakras, uh, they are pretty much anytime that something goes, go, something comes up in my life, uh, it's usually, you know, it's because of an imbalance, there's an imbalance somewhere. And one of the tools that I personally use to figure out the imbalance and to also come back to balance is my knowledge of the chakras or my studying of the chakras. And we'll move right into them at, uh, in this workshop, because really the best way to understand the stuff is to just, I think, get right into it. Uh, the essential oils component to it is really near and dear to me because I've, I've been working with essential oils for a very long time, but uh, recently, just in the past, by recently, I mean in like the last five-ish years, uh, working with essential oils has really brought me a lot closer to nature. So when we work with an essential oil, it's really a very potent extract from a plant and it has been really just transformative in how I've seen nature and how I've even started to study Ayurveda and how uh, I've started to just come to balance and to provide different different other ways of uh, healing for myself and, and for friends and family and clients. So uh, we'll, we'll dive right into it. If you're not too familiar with what essential oils are, they're basically plant extracts that offer a range of physical and emotional benefits. They are uh, the part of a plant that gives the plant its its like its its true essence. Really, uh, I always like to give the example of the tea tree, uh, the tea tree oil, and also just the tea tree in general. Tea tree grows in um, in in Australia, so in a really like muddy, murky, nasty swampy area and if you're familiar with what happens in like muddy nasty swampy murky places usually a lot of bacteria forms there there's usually a lot of bugs uh there's it's it's a space that really is conducive for a lot of like disease and rotting and ickiness the tea tree flourishes there it does really well there and in turn that really means that when we we use tea tree oil 
uh, it has natural antiseptic properties. If you ever have gotten a cut or a scrape or like something weird, like an ingrown hair or something like that, and you put a little bit of tea tree oil on it, uh, the tea tree oil, it, it's, it's incredibly potent too. You usually have to mix it with a carrier oil to dilute it, but the tea tree will work in a way where it actually gets rid of infections. So because the tree, it's the tea tree itself grows in such an icky place and it, it's, it survives there, when we use tea tree oil, we're actually taking the the those elements of it, those qualities of it that are able to flourish and survive in, in kind of gross places. Uh, the thing with essential oils too is that when we work with an essential oil, we're working with the whole plant. So another example is if I'm using lavender, um, I don't know, maybe I can't sleep and I'm I'm diffusing lavender in my bedroom. I'm not only getting the benefits, the relaxing benefits of lavender, but uh, lavender also really um, works in so many other ways to just bring me to a neutral space. It does a lot more than just relax me or get me ready for sleep. Any quality of lavender that, uh, that, that it has, like, for example, it really helps us see and sit in our truth and be okay with it. I might be using lavender to try to go to bed, but then I'm also getting these other benefits of it as well. So it's not like um, certain things that are made in a lab where I'm only taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that because I want to treat something like a headache. Uh, I, I'm using the full plant. The seven chakras, they're basically energy centers in the body that correspond to different physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects. Uh, the way that some of us can even try to understand the seven chakras is we we have nadis, something called nadis, N-A-D-I-S. Nadis are pretty much these energy channels that run through our body. There's three of them that start at the base of our spine. One is called Shashumna Nadi, which goes straight up the spine. Then there's Ida and Pingala. Uh, Ida, they all three start at the base and then Ida and Pingala separate and then they come back together separate, come back together, separate, come back together. And the points where they meet are where the chakras are. Throughout our lives, the chakras start to form. Uh, and we'll get through that once we move right into the, the chakras themselves. So starting right with, with the first chakra. So the first chakra is, it's, it's called Muladhara. And I'll move through the chakras and then get into the oils at the end of it. But basically, Muladhara chakra, the purpose of it is our foundation. This chakra starts to develop. It's, it's at the base of the spine, but it also radiates downward and all around. So it's not just something that stays in one space. Uh, chakra means, means wheel. So these things are turning and radiating. And this begins to form when we're in the womb and then about up to 12 months. And if you even think about what happens or what's going on in a person's life and a little baby's life at this time, uh, they're trying to find their own grounding. They're trying to find their roots, their trust, their nourishment. So the identity for this is physical, really coming into a physical identity. The color is red. I mentioned that the location's at the base of the spine. The element is earth. And the issues that come with the first chakra are, are finding our roots, finding the grounding, finding trust. Uh, also, this is where we find find things like uh, concepts like, like boundaries, prosperity, home, family, finding our tribe. And this is something where just because the first chakra is developing from the womb up to 12 months uh, or 12 year, 12 months, about a year old, that doesn't mean that it stops developing. This just means that during this time of development, if a baby is in a family where there's maybe a lot of screaming and uh, there's a lot of energy of not feeling grounded, maybe they're moving around a lot, maybe there's uncertainty that's all around. When this first chakra is developing, this person may then end up being, I don't know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and constantly feeling like they're not grounded, like they're not rooted, or like they can't trust their home, wherever that is. So the way we work through the chakras is if I'm a person that I'm that's having issues or realizing that I've got some issues with some of these, these top things, 
beneath issues. Uh, I would look and see what was going on with myself during this time of, of development and then uh, just see where my starting off point is to move through it and address those things. All the chakras also have developmental tasks. So some of those for the first one are physical growth, motor skills, and uh, object permeance. The basic right of the first chakra is to be here and to have, and then its shadow is fear. So when we're really balanced in our first chakra, we're in a place where we're feeling like we deserve to be here, where uh, I take up space and it's okay. This is my space too. There's enough space for everybody. And the shadow of that is fear. So if I do have some imbalances in that first chakra, I maybe might be be afraid of, of, of uh, actually finding grounding. I might be afraid to settle down in one space. I might have some issues maybe with, with finding um, a secure sort of family or tribe of my own. I might be moving around a lot or, or moving away from things out of a place of fear. Traumas and abuses that come with the first chakra are if there's birth trauma, uh, that might cause some some is issues with the first chakra. Uh, and this isn't just that the that time of life from like the womb up until uh, about 12 months. This can happen. The, these traumas can get caused, can cause imbalances in the first chakra throughout life. Really abandonment, physical neglect, any kind of malnourishment, um, feeding difficulties. That would be something that happens when when we're really young. Physical abuse, uh, inherited traumas. We also would maybe even start to inherit our parents' issues as well with this. So that could be something like um, Holocaust survivors, war veterans, poverty conditions, things like that. So maybe we weren't directly affected by by really deep trauma, but maybe our grandparents were or their grandparents were. So it's something to think about when maybe we find that we've got an issue with something and we're looking at our own lives and we're like, oh gosh, like I've done all this work. I've done all this therapy. I've done all this yoga. Why do I still have this issue? It really may be something that was inherited from a general generational situation. And that really manifests as an imbalance in the first chakra. An imbalance will show up in an excessive way with obesity, overeating, hoarding, really material fixation on things, feeling sluggish or lazy, and uh, fear of change. If it's deficient, there's going to be a disconnection from the body. Person will probably be very underweight, restless, anxious, lots of anxiety, probably not too stable with finances, and uh, also poor boundaries. This could look like disorders and think about that where the first chakra is, right? Base of the spine. What's going on with that area? The any issues with the bowels, any issues with uh large intestine disorders. Also the solid parts of the body like the bones and the teeth, things like that because uh the, the first chakra really has a lot to do with grounding and our bones and our teeth are our foundation, right? They're a skeletal foundation. Uh, issues with legs, feet, knees, really anything from the base of the spine downward. And uh, things also don't, maybe won't show up this this dramatically. I have been in situations where I really didn't know where like I was going to maybe be living uh, or I, I just had some some issues where I, I didn't know what was going to maybe happen with an apartment or a living scenario that I was in. And uh, this has happened twice to me before I sprained my ankle. It's just that area that the first chakra governs. It's really easy to 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 fall into places that are or fall down or trip down because we don't have our feet on the ground. We don't have that sense of groundedness. Balanced characteristics of this first chakra are good health, vitality, groundedness, feeling comfortable in our body. So feeling comfortable in this home that we've been given the sense of trust in the world, feeling like the world has our back, right? We feel stable. And uh, we're also tapped into prosperity as well, recognizing that there's there's enough out there for me. There's enough out there for everybody. There's enough out there for me to share. All right, so moving into the essential oils. And the way to use essential oils, uh, 
I'll actually move through the ways to use them as I move through each of them. But clove, clove is a very hot oil. It really will help us work with boundaries, uh, finding that sense of courage, really coming into our space of empowerment. Uh, it'll really help us get rid of any kind of set feelings of defeat. Uh, if we have a fear of rejection too, so maybe feeling like we can't set a solid foundation because we're, we'll be rejected by somebody, rejected by, I don't know, a landlord, a, a, a boss or a partner, something like that. It also uh, will help us overcome codependency issues. A lot of codependency stuff can start to really, um, oh, cod codependency is a whole other workshop, <laughs> but uh a lot of um, clove can help address some of that stuff. So it really helps us with boundaries. Clove is a really hot oil, meaning if you put it directly on your skin, it might burn. It might make you feel a little, it might make, turn your skin red. It might make you feel like your skin's a little irritated. So you maybe might not put this right on your skin. I personally don't. This is one that I'll maybe just inhale right from the bottle or I'll diffuse it around my home. Uh, Kapaiba. This specific oil is uh, going to help us work with forgiveness, self-awareness, and, and clarity. It also helps us connect with our past and helps us connect to just a deeper way to uh, experience deeper meaning in our lives. So if we're feeling a little disconnected from what our roots are or from like the, from our purpose, from our foundation, right? Kapaiba is going to help us face that and, and work with that. Also helps us work with forgiveness, uh, self-awareness, and clarity. Kabaiba can be used uh, really uh, just a disclaimer on taking something internally. I personally, the oils that I use, I take them internally, the ones that, that can be taken internally. I will put a couple of drops of kabaiba, kabaiba underneath my tongue. Uh, kabaiba also has been used pretty frequently as a, sort of not a replacement for, but I, I use it as a replacement for CBD oil. I, I haven't used CBD oil in a very long time because I work with kabaiba now. And uh, the oils that I specifically work with, I know that I can ingest them. I know that I could take them. I know that they're safe. And uh, I'll leave a link at the end of this for for you if you want to check out the oils that I use. But if you have a source of your own and you know that you can trust that source, if it's even even better, if it's somebody that you could talk to, if you know the people that um, that create the oils, definitely uh, check in with them first and make sure that you can take them internally. But you can put these a couple of drops of Kapaiba right on um, right right on like right on that area of, of that first chakra. You can move, um, give yourself a little bit of a massage around like the, the lower the lower body. You can use this as, as a way to really start to tap into a little bit more of a, a strong foundation. And then cedar wood is another really beautiful oil that I love working with too. I use kapaiba and cedar, cedar oil pretty frequently, but cedar oil is... Uh, going to help us tap into feeling supported and also feeling like we're a part of a community or even if you are somebody that facilitates communities if you are somebody that is like a, a leader of some kind maybe you lead teacher trainings or you teach yoga classes or uh I don't know you, any kind of leader really maybe you work in an office and and you're just the person that people turn to a whole bunch Cedarwood helps really drive in that sense of community. It it increases feelings of feeling connected, of belonging to a, a community, of belonging to a space. It increases feelings of support too, and uh, and just feel, being bonded through community. You can use cedarwood. Uh, definitely, you can diffuse this in your office, in your studio. You can just inhale it directly from the bottle. And you can also massage this one too onto the the areas that govern that sacral the the um, Muladhara chakra the whole legs state um, base of the spine area all of that stuff so even feet too putting it on your feet can be really really helpful and really grounding so that's another really beautiful oil to work with okay the second chakra Svaristana. 
And the purpose of this chakra is movement and connection. The time that this starts to develop is around six months, years old to two years. And you'll see that these developmental stages sometimes will overlap. It's because like, you don't, I, on, on a, on our like six month birthday, time doesn't stop and say, all right, your root chakra is done developing. Now time for your uh, second chakra to start to develop. So it's different for everybody. We're all unique individuals. So this development of this chakra might start six months for some people. Maybe it starts 12 months. It's all, there's this kind of, there's, there's a lot of wiggle room there when it comes to the developmental stages really. But uh, the identity is our emotional identity. Color is orange. The location is the, abdo the abdomen and really all around it, right? When we think of the, the abdominals, we might just think of like that front body, but it really is everything that, that's just, that's all around us. Everything that is, um, is around us is, is around the abdominal area. Uh, the element is water. Some issues that will come up or that are, are affiliated with the second chakra are movement, sensation, emotions, sensuality. It's the place where we experience pleasure too. Uh, that whole area of um, pretty much feeling like we're, we're worthy of experience pleasure, our ability to go with the flow and not hold back and see where that takes us. This is the time of life too, where if you have kids or work with kids or you've got kids in your family, you might notice this is the time of life where they start to like run, run off and draw all over things. Uh, they might like pull things out of the cabinets. They're curious. They're finding their own sense of creativity in the world. So, and uh, the developmental tasks are really the, the exploration of the world, really understanding like what's what's going on out there. Where do I fit into it? How can I create with it? Our basic right that comes with the second chakra is to feel and to have pleasure. The shadow is guilt. So um, with this second chakra, as it's developing, it's it's we're we're learning about our ability and our right to feel things and to feel pleasure in the world. Uh, the, the shadow of that, this is usually like what's on the opposite end of the right is guiltiness, feeling guilty about feeling good. Uh, and, and we play with this, this, this sort of like ebb and flow with that throughout our lives, right? But uh, this can be caused traumas and abuses that come with the second chakra or any kind of sexual, emotional or physical abuse, uh, really any kind of rejection. This is the time in, in the developmental stage where maybe maybe the child is like drawing all over the walls because they don't know any better and they just found some crayons their parent caregiver nanny whoever teacher wasn't looking and they just made a whole mess of, of a wall with permanent paint or marker uh if in that moment the adult says what is wrong with you that's bad you're bad that child at that age is going to start to move through life thinking that expressing themselves is bad. So, you know, we have people now that are like full-blown adults in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, what to speak of like 60s, 70s, 80s that uh, have trouble expressing themselves or when they try to create something in the world, they, they might think that it's bad. They might have some guilt around it. So it's not that it's, you know, like, you're stuck in that state of mind. It's just giving us, we learn this stuff. That way we have an opportunity to notice that this is what's going on. Wow, I have guilt around this. Why? And then we might be able to trace it back to something that happened, you know, at this time of life during this development of the second chakra. And uh, really, even growing up and having maybe it's a family or maybe it's, it's a system or uh, an educational system that the person was involved in that was constantly saying expressing yourself is wrong or any kind of sexual desires are wrong. You know, how is someone going through life in, in that way? And that can be something that happens later on in life too. So maybe like around the time of uh, puberty or something like that, they, a person might, might be told that they're wrong for having, whenever it is that people start to have certain feelings of uh, that, that sort of sexual lust or those desires 
if they're told that's gross and disgusting and that's wrong, uh, they'll end up having some kind of issues maybe with some of this second chakra stuff. So again, that's not like you're stuck with that for life. That's just, hey, you know, you're an adult now and you've noticed this. Let's take a look and see where maybe this started or uh, what we can do to, to sort it out. When a, the second chakra is imbalanced in an excessive way, this will be those people or the person that's acting out really sexually or with addiction. So pleasure addiction, um, really like having super strong, deep emotions, mood swings, people that like to like to cause a lot of drama, uh, manipulative people. If there's a deficiency in the second chakra, this is the the people that are maybe they don't really know how to be too social. They're scared of pleasure. They they have really deep boundaries. They don't like to leave the home. They don't like to change anything. Uh, they don't want to feel anything. They might even walk around, like you could notice people that maybe you have like an excessiveness in the second chakra. They walk around like with their hips way out. And then people with the deficiency will maybe be a little more tuned in, very, very covered up. It may show up physically uh, with, Disorders of the reproductive organs, uh, there may be some spleen, urinary system issues, menstrual difficulties, and uh, even sexual dysfunction as well. A lot of stuff that could even happen with this as well are uh, loss of appetite for just general things in life that give us pleasure, right? Food, uh, life experiences. The balanced characteristics of this are graceful movement, emotional intelligence. These people know how to actually experience pleasure, but not fall into just being a pleasure seeker. Uh, it's really finding that, that, that middle ground in life where I'm, I'm recognizing that life is happening for me and not to me. And I'm taking that with grace. I have boundaries. The essential oils for this now. So Cypress is a really interesting oil it, it has a lot to deal with our motion like movement and fluidity uh it creates an energetic flow and it'll give us emotional catharsis where we when we're working with with cyprus it'll help us come to a place of like those aha moments of oh wow that's why i feel this way that's why i'm acting out or that's why i'm not acting at all uh, Cyprus will help us come to that kind of decision. It'll help us really understand that we need to let go of the past and not let it consume us in the present moment. Um, it, it gives us that ability to go with the flow and adapt to what's coming and what's happening where we're not stuck in like, oh, this happened to me. So now I am this person. Cyprus is going to help us move through those things. And then uh, the way to use Cyprus too is... Again, you can inhale it from the bottle. You could diffuse it. You can also, uh, I like working with this one on the spine. Um, I'll mix it up with some carrier oil and either apply it to my spine or if I have a client or something like that, I might make them a concoction of it and tell them to apply it to their spine when they're really working through some of this second chakra stuff. Uh, also the bottoms of the feet. When we apply an essential oil to the bottoms of the feet, the bottoms of the feet actually have the biggest, largest pores in our body. So uh, we'll get the benefits of that essential oil quicker when they when it's taken in through the bottoms of the feet. Clary Sage, uh, this one is helpful with actually finding clarity and, and vision. It's going to help us have an open mind when we're dealing with issues that uh, stuff with the second chakra can be really sensitive, right? Like when we start talking about pleasure and we start talking about our inability or our, our deep ability to feel or to not feel, it can kind of um, cloud us a little bit. A lot of us can, and it, you know, feel shameful about this kind of stuff. It's not easy to talk about a lot of the second chakra stuff. So with this, with working with Clary, Clary Sage, um, it helps us actually change our perceptions. So maybe we had this vision of, oh, you know, this went on when I was this age and that's why I am the way I am. It'll help us actually reframe that story that we were telling ourselves. It also helps us 
cultivate the courage to see the truth, to see what's actually there and to recognize, oh, wow, what this teacher said to me when I was trying to express myself, that actually wasn't the truth. That was just maybe this, this, I don't know, I was a child and there was a 20 year old teacher and they were having a bad day. So they screamed at me and said that I was a bad kid for, for drawing on the desk or whatever it was. Clary Sage will help us to actually uh, see what the truth actually was about a situation. And we can work with her by, again, inhaling from the bottle. You could diffuse this in your room. Um, also nice to put this this specific oil behind the ears, you might even rub a little bit on your third eye, that place that's right between the eyebrows or on your forehead. Uh, internally, I also have taken Clary's Sage internally under the tongue or even just in a, in a glass of water. Again, I'll keep saying it, make sure if you are taking these oils internally, you know the source, you know where they're coming from and that they're safe to be taken internally. <clears throat> The third chakra. So this is around the age of like 18 months to four years. This is the time when we're learning like, okay, if I draw on the wall, I'm going to get yelled at. Or, or we learn that our actions have, um, there's a reaction to our actions. We learn that we also need to be proactive if we want something. We actually have to go out there and make stuff happen. We can't just sit and cry about it. So this is when, um, as a kid, as a toddler, really, we're learning also like right and wrong. We're also coming into our own. We're understanding who we are in the world. So of course, with that, the identity is ego. Color is yellow. The location is the solar plexus. Elements is fire. And if you think about it, that second chakra, that element was water. So now that we're moving into fire, water has got like this sort of like flowiness to it. You know, when we look at water in the wild or in nature, it goes around things. It takes the path of least resistance. Fire is like, it'll burn you. It'll get its point across and it will transform things. So the purpose is transformation. This third chakra will help us with transformation. It's gonna help us um, with our energy, with our activity, with getting things done, with realizing that we actually need um, to, to be our own person in the world. So of course, with that said, the developmental task is this realization of separateness. And, uh, and it's called Manipura, so third chakra Manipura. Uh, the purpose is transformation. Basic right is to act uh, and to be an individual. Shadow is shame. So traumas and abuses that come with this can be shaming, uh, domination of will, physical abuse, being in a dangerous environment, being afraid of punishment, uh, even age inappropriate uh, responsibilities. So this can come with like, like a parent acting as the child and wanting the child to almost parent them. Um, even inherited shame from a parent. When the third chakra, when this money poor chakra is imbalanced in an excessive way, the person will be overly aggressive, dominating, controlling. Uh, it's like their world, you're living in it. They're very power hungry. Uh, they're deceitful. They throw tantrums. And you might even, a lot of these things are things that show up in that that age, right? From a like a toddler to the age of four, you see a lot of this. You also see a lot of this in, in adults. A lot of adults really are, are dealing with that imbalanced third chakra. And uh, I, I personally think that it has so much to do just with the culture that we live in where a lot of these things are praised. Uh, it's almost like, we're in a world where if you aren't power hungry, if you're not very fiery, uh, you're you're not you're not given a thumbs up in life. If you're not like a competitive person, you know there's a time and a place for that. But I think that this culture that we're in has just been so overly like um, over 
over appreciative of, of a type A personality that it's almost gone into a very excessive state. So uh, I, there's there's a lot going on with third chakra issues in, in the world. And it's just, it's the world we live in right now. If there's a deficiency in the third chakra, there'll be low energy. Uh, the person will be easily manipulated. There probably won't be any self-discipline. Um, physically cold too, probably cold all the time, which would also mean that the, the, the digestive system, right? The digestive fire isn't operating very well. Uh, so they'll have a victim mentality. Like, why me? It's always me. Uh, everybody else has it but me. This may show up physically through eating disorders, digestive disorders, diabetes, muscle spasms, uh, chronic fatigue, issues with the stomach. So that area of um, of the body where we even think like 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 that that there is there is fire where things get transformed. So that whole the area where where maybe if there's just too much fire or not enough fire that's when imbalances will start to show up. But if we're balanced in our third chakra, we will be responsible, we're reliable, good self-esteem. Uh, there's confidence there. There's a sense of spontaneity, sense of humor. These are the people that can laugh at themselves. All of us, right? When we have a balanced third chakra, we're able to look at the world and not laugh at life when things go wrong, but really all of the chakras when they're in balance will remind us that life is happening for me and not to me. Uh, there'll be a warmth in our personality. We're all right when a challenge shows up. We're all right to actually understand that, that we're not always in control. Third chakra essential oils. Lemon is going to help really work on our focus, energy, alertness, and bringing in a sense of joy. A uh, lemon is also the oil that'll help us move through feelings of self-judgment. So if we're ever feeling like I'm too stupid to do this, wow, that was a dumb decision. Um, I'm not good enough. I'm not a good student. I'm. I'll never make it. I. I'm a bad yoga teacher I'm a bad employee whatever it might be those limiting beliefs that we set for ourselves lemon helps us move through those lemon helps us recognize that that's 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 a lie and those things are not true uh it helps us move through confusion and bring us back to clarity and it'll also help us come back from a lot of overstimulation. So if maybe we've been studying too much or working too hard and we feel like we're being depleted or we feel depleted, lemon will come in and help us actually uh, be a little more energized and, and, not, and move through that depletion. It also helps us uh, move into a place of playfulness, right? When the third chakra is balanced, there's a sense of playfulness. Sometimes we're lacking that or we're not feeling it. We might be feeling like when a friend or a family member or a student and a, a coworker, an employee, maybe they're like having a good day and they're laughing and it's upsetting you and you're getting really like flustered with it or you're, you're it's, maybe it's one of those days where everybody's just annoying you. Lemon, working with lemon will help you restore that sense of playfulness so you can laugh along with them. Ways to use lemon are, uh, you can, again, all of these we can inhale right from the bottle. Uh, you can diffuse these for sure. Um, in, inhaling in the hands also. So if you're using lemon and you just put a few drops in the hands, you can rub the hands together and breathe that way. Just avoid touching your eyes or anything um, like that. You can apply this on your wrists. You can apply this on your temples. Uh, this is another one that you can take internally. So again, I'll say it for each chakra, make sure that you know the source, make sure that you know that you can in ingest them. And I personally put lemon in my water every morning. I use lemon water in my water every morning. That way I could cultivate focus, energy, alertness, and joy each day. Rosemary is another beautiful oil for our third chakra. Uh, rosemary is also one of the plant allies that helps us with being teachable, 
with being able to adjust and uh, with any kind of transitions as well. Uh, Rosemary really will help us over, over, not over, it oversees knowledge and, and transitions. So if, because the third chakra really deals with transformation, uh, there's a lot of third chakra energy that we need when maybe we're going from one place to the next, when we're growing, when we're working through stuff. So uh, Rosemary is going to help us move through transitions. It helps us uh, really recognize our own true intellect. Rosemary will remind us that we can be instructed from something that's even uh, greater than what like our own mind has to teach us, right? So if we're working, maybe we're in a place where there's a deficiency in the third chakra. If we start to work, if there's a deficiency, we might be really like hot headed and stubborn. So Rosemary will, will remind us, help us work with us to remind us that we don't have all the answers. It's okay to ask for help. And it'll even help us connect to, to a little bit more of a divine truth. Oh, and you can, we use Rosemary again, inhaling from the bottle, um, aromatically that way. You can topically put this on your head, behind your ears. Uh, this one too can also be taken internally. Just uh, make sure you know the source and take it in water. You could put a few drops under your tongue. Really, whatever whatever helps you, whatever helps you connect with the oil and in, in whatever you're you're needing it for. Moving on to the fourth chakra. So this is Anahata. The chakra's purpose is for love and balance. This will start to develop in uh, the stages of four years old to seven years old. Um, this is the time of life where where we're forming relationships, where maybe as a little kid, you remember like this playful age of four to seven, you might you might have like had your first best friend or something like that. Um, this is the, the age too, where like, like little kids will sometimes uh, look at somebody and say, you're my boyfriend or you're my girlfriend or something like that. Uh, I remember when I was this age, there was like, like this little boy that was my age. I forget if it was like, I think it was kindergarten or or, or, or preschool or something. Uh, I, I, I don't know where he got this from, maybe TV or like his parents, but he took my hand and he told, he called me the love of his life and kissed my hand. And I was so grossed out. I was just that girl that was like, ew, that's yucky. And uh, I, I remember I went home and I washed my hands. I was just grossed out by it. But uh, it's that age though, where people, where we as human beings are, are looking for some kind of connection with people, where we're trying to understand love. We're trying to understand too what, what we see in the relationships around us. So maybe we see our caretakers or people in our family, people that are that are close to the family, uh, people that are in our lives at this age, we're seeing them actually in relationship with each other. And we're trying to take that in and understand it and, and figure that out. So the identity with that is social, our social identity. We're trying to figure out, you know, where, how we socially work in this world. Uh, the developmental task is forming relationships. So again, really understanding friendships, understanding what, what we're seeing too, when we're seeing people in love. Uh, it has to do with self-love, intimacy, devotion. So our spiritual um, our spiritual connection is, um, it, the, according to the chakras and this developmental stuff, we're not quite like tapped into to, to too much of that just yet. But that doesn't mean that where uh, we we don't have that that innate or soul doesn't have that innate connection to the divine to God. Some kids, especially at this age, might really be feeling that. Uh, especially if you have a home that is, or if the the person has a home that's very connected to to their faith, they're connected to God. Uh, this might be the age where maybe they want to partake in, in rituals with like the home altar or prayer or, uh, or, or meditation, things like that. So you might start to see that in kids around that age. Color is green. The location is the center of the chest. The element is air. 
our basic right with the fourth chakra is to love and be loved. Shadow is grief. So uh, the traumas and abuses that come with the fourth chakra are rejection, abandonment, loss, shame, constant criticism, abuses to any other chakras, especially the lower ones, um, unacknowledged grief. So we might even be going through something really heavy. And if somebody doesn't acknowledge that we're grieving, that we're sad, it'll cause, uh, that, that's where the trauma of the chakra will start to start, right? So there might be a loveless, cold environment during the, it could be again during the developmental stages, or it could be now. I mean, gosh, my fourth chakra has been like, her, <laughs> you know, it, it's been kind of like kicked to the ground a few times in my adult life uh so, so you know but we recognize what's happening and why this is happening and we have these tools to to work with with healing our fourth chakra and come bring back to balance bring it back to balance an excessive fourth chakra will see codependency poor boundaries demanded clinging jealousy overly sacrificing this is like um I don't think I need to speak on that. I think we've all kind of seen um, a lot of movies or maybe things in our lives that that really uh, are examples of an excessive fourth chakra. An imbalance where it's deficient, it's antisocial, cold, critical, judgmental, um, isolation, depression, fear of relationships, and also narcissism or lack of empathy. Somebody that just can't you're crying in front of them with your heart on your sleeve and this person is just like wants to go eat eat their lunch or whatever uh that's just efficient for the chakra it'll show up physically with disorders of the heart the lungs the breasts uh maybe even some issues with the arms too um shortness of breath sunken chest circulation problems asthma immune system deficiencies, tension between the shoulder blades. So hopefully, you know, we address these things. And Ayurveda especially teaches us the practices of, of addressing our imbalances before they become physical issues. Uh, we might get that feeling of like, oh gosh, I am so like, I am grieving right now. And if we don't move through that in a healthy way, that's when maybe some some sort of things might start to manifest that go beyond just the feeling. When we're balanced though, the fourth chakra in balance is compassionate, loving, empathetic, self-loving, peaceful. There's an overall sense of balance and there's, there's good immunity. Remember, this is the space of the heart. There's so much importance to the heart space. We're constantly trying to bring the heart to balance. We're constantly uh, trying to open the heart and, and also recognize when the heart's maybe a little too open and when we've given too much or maybe we're, we're holding back too much. So the heart's a really powerful place. Uh, the heart chakra too, if we think about where it is, literally it's in the heart, it's around the heart center. This is the place where now, um, right, when we move to the fifth chakra, that's the throat. Anything that comes through the throat, so that's like how we express, how we speak, all of that, it's got to move through the heart first. So up until the heart, right, we've gone through the first, second, third chakra that have to do with grounding, foundation, expression, creativity, um, understanding where our limitations are, understanding that I can't just keep doing this because then this will happen. Uh, all of that kind of stuff. We're, we're learning a lot of lessons in the first three chakras. And then when we get to the fourth one, it's almost like it's this really beautiful space for, um, for love to really start to, to flourish, for love to really, uh, really, really just manifest. And then from there, that's how we that's that's how we express ourselves in the world. And we'll get to that in the, the fifth chakra. But to balance the fourth chakra, again, this is the heart chakra, yang lang. This this oil is going to connect us to playfulness. Um it's 
help it'll help us be joyful and it'll help us let's just say that'll help us really emotionally um be connected to the world and be connected to our own emotions uh in many many ways this this oil too is gonna help us realize the beauty or see the beauty and in, in everything see the beauty in the world around us see the beauty within ourselves as well um it helps us connect to even our our inner child so our ability to not only play but also recognize that there's there's a little bit of innocence in a lot of things uh it's also said to be one of the most powerful remedies for the heart. Uh, the The connection to the heart is something that we we sometimes ignore. I mean, I know, I don't know. I think if you're here listening to this, you may be a little more connected to your heart than than some of the rest of the world. But we live in a world where it's very mind focused, right? Uh, if we say like, my heart feels this or whatever we might be looked at as like, oh, that's just like some woo-woo talk uh, that doesn't make sense. Give me the science behind that. But uh, the heart has a certain way of receiving information. It it really is how, it's like almost like an access point to our soul. So if our heart is, is constantly being taken care of, and that's what this, this essential oil will do, we're actually... Um, coming back to a really deep place of intuition we see things a little bit more clearly we actually are a little bit more connected to hey i want to do this uh and i feel strongly about it or i do not want to do this and i feel strongly about it so it's super powerful beautiful oil peppermint uh on the other hand i shouldn't say on the other hand it's not like it's it's the opposite of it but <clears throat> <laughs> that was appropriate for what talking about the throat chakra. Um peppermint is oh excuse me again. All right. Uh, peppermint is going to help us out with a little bit more of like a buoyancy to the heart. So like um, sometimes we might feel like it's really hard to move forward. Like it's really hard to, to get through some place of pain. Um, peppermint is going to be there. It's kind of like, like this friend that comes in and is like, everything's okay look on the bright side don't worry and that can be really helpful at the same time that can be something that maybe makes us ignore what's really there um we might not we might get too stuck in okay everything's good i'm fine everything's fine and not see what's actually causing us the grief um that doesn't mean peppermint is bad. It just means it helps us move through places where we might be feeling really stuck. So um, with peppermint oil, you can use peppermint if you need a little bit more of an uplift. It'll help keep the heart light, especially if you're going through something or we're going through something where there's a lot of issues with, um, with like feeling of a heavy heart. Uh, peppermint might give us a reason to just go through the uh, over things and under things, not quite through them. But peppermint can also help us open the door to get into the the place of um, of facing something, but with like a lightness. So helps us stay optimistic. It will give us the strength to face emotional pain. But uh, using too much peppermint. Well, there, there's a, a space there to almost uh, 
kind of like lean on the side of like, I'm fine and everything's fine. Don't worry. <clears throat> Kapaiba though, I, and then peppermint too. So uh, yang, ylang, ylang, you can use that just as we've been using everything. You could use that maybe in like a bath oil. You can make a bath with this oil. Um, you could put this in your lotions. You could just inhale it. You could diffuse it. Peppermint, um, for sure, you could diffuse this. You could use it in your cleaning products too. If you're creating like, <clears throat> like a product that for your home, if you feel like things are really heavy or there's a lot of grief, peppermint's really helpful with that. You can also use peppermint, um, same as we've been using the other oils. You can use them uh, as a scent. You could use them, just open the bottle, smell it. Uh, you can also use it on your temples, back of your neck, but just be mindful that you might have to dilute it. Kapaiba, we talked about her before, but this is uh, for the heart. <clears throat> Kapaiba will help with unveiling and forgiveness. So if we're holding on to something that's preventing us from actually finding balance in the heart, Kapaiba is going to assist us with letting go of, of that. Um, those feelings of I'm not good enough. I wish I did that. I wish I did this. Kapaiba will help with that. And just as I said with her before, you can use Kapaiba um, for, uh, you can put it, put it under your tongue. You can also inhale it, diffuse it, and uh, use it as a carrier oil. And with almost all of these also, you can really give yourself a massage over the place of the fourth chakra, maybe even on the back too. And, um, and that'll assist with that. <clears throat> Okay, fifth chakra. I definitely had like a coughing fit in my fifth chakra before this. Um, fifth chakra stuff. So this is interesting because the developmental stage, and clearly it's the throat. So I was making jokes before. Uh, the, the throat, the fifth chakra is the shuddha. Communication and creativity and the location is the throat. So this will start to develop around the ages of seven and 12. This is kind of like that age where um, we might see, unfortunately, people telling kids this age, be quiet or, uh, you know, you're, you're to be seen and not heard. This is like the age where, where kids have opinions. They're chatty. They're really finding their own expression. They're finding their voice. So that's either on one end of that it's it's a beautiful time because it can be a place where that where it's creativity expression is really celebrated but there's a a chance there that an imbalance can start to happen the identity is creative the color is blue location is the throat the element is ether and this is going to uh, connect with listening, with finding a person's own voice, with communication. Uh, really, like as we move through the chakras, things have to pass through the heart to get to the throat and then to come out into the world. So if we're not balanced in the heart, there might be some issues actually communicating things that come out of our mouth. Uh, creative expression and communication skills. This is also, <clears throat> if you've ever like, had a disagreement with a partner or family member and like the two of you are pretty much saying the same thing but in different ways but you're fighting about it usually it's just because like the hearts aren't connecting and uh there needs to be a little bit more of a heart connection because there's there might be an issue there where I'm feeling one way my partner's feeling the other way I'm saying this they're saying that but we're fighting even though we're saying the same darn thing. So uh, the, I, I really feel like the heart and the throat connect in such a, a really intricate, kind of beautiful, interesting way. Uh, the basic right is to speak and to be heard. Uh, the shadow is lies. So maybe we've been lied to. Traumas and abuses come with lying, with verbal abuse, yelling all the time. Uh, 
criticism, that'll be what blocks a lot of creativity. Secrets, so any kind of um, like, like, you know, if, if you have, a, I don't know, somebody with threats for telling. So if you tell somebody something and it's a secret and then they end up using that against you, that can cause um, an imbalance in your uh, your throat chakra. Even parents or teachers that say don't talk back, uh, but in a negative way, you know, there there's a balanced way to 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 correct your to correct people. Uh, alcohol too, chemical dependent families. So there's the family the that's, that's growing up in a family or a community where maybe you feel like you can't talk to people, you feel like you can't trust the people around you. If this is excessive, there'll be too much talking, uh, talking as a defense, an ability to listen. The people, this is somebody that's talking over you while uh, you're trying to tell a story, while you're trying to give your heart. Lots of interruptions. Deficiency will have a person that has a small, weak voice, um, <clears throat> very shy, they're tone deaf, afraid to speak. Uh, they're not able to actually put their feelings into their words. So there's there's a lack of communication there. And this will show physically disorders of the throat, ears, voice, neck tightness, jaw issues. Um, the chakra's name itself mean, means purification. So there might be some kind of toxic issue that, that even shows up. Uh, I, for example, with me, I remember there was a window of time where I was getting a lot of throat infections. Um, it was a time in my life where I really like, I didn't know how to express myself. It was probably around the time of, um, of high school. Like, <clears throat> uh, I, I just really didn't know. I mean, there were a lot of issues. I mean, being a high, in high school, <laughs> some people loved it. I, I had a lot of imbalances. There was a lot going on and, uh, I would constantly get issues with my throat. I wouldn't, I would get infections. I would get, uh, a lot of stuff would come up and it really had to do with just not knowing how to communicate in the world and how to actually express myself. Balanced characteristics are, uh, you're able to be a good listener. You're actually able to sit and listen and not say, not interrupt. Um, <clears throat> a person that also has maybe an imbalance with the throat chakra as you're talking to them, they might be that person that's constantly going, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that they're trying to interrupt you. It's not that they're trying to to like downgrade your your story or anything like that. It's just that they 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 have some fifth chakra troubles themselves, um, and and they're they're talk they they really don't realize that they're interrupting you and they're talking over you, but. A person that is balanced on that fifth chakra is going to give really good eye contact with you. Be quiet and listen. You'll know that they're listening because they'll be nodding. They might be mirroring your actions. Um, <clears throat> their timing is really good. Their rhythm is really clear. All right, the essential oils for our fifth chakra. <clears throat> Birch is uh, an oil that'll help you stay grounded, supported, and connected. And we need those, those qualities to actually speak from a place of truth. We feel like we're supported, grounded, and connected. Our message will come across a little bit more clearly. Um, it helps us also take support when support is offered. So maybe we... Uh, how does that connect to the fifth chakra, right? If I'm struggling in some kind of way, I might not always be able to express it, but if I work with Birch, uh, I, I'm actively inviting help into my life or it'll help me, it'll encourage me to ask for help. Uh, you can work with Birch by, again, inhaling it from the bottle. You could diffuse Birch. This is something really, really great to apply on the spine too. Uh, and even behind the neck. <clears throat> lavender, though, I think lavender, lavender is my favorite oil for for a lot of things, but lavender is like the oil of communication. 
when I think communication, when I think fifth chakra, I go right to lavender because lavender is what's going to help us with clear communication, with our self-awareness and with expression. Um, lavender is the oil that encourages honesty in our emotions and will help us speak really it'll help us speak from the heart so as as we learn to communicate and we're we're tapping into feelings or when we're trying to communicate deep feelings lavender will help us actually communicate those feelings in a really powerful sincere secure way and with lavender i mean you can all the same ways diffuse her you can put some drops in your hands and you know put put lavender on your throat uh I have put lavender in tea. I've actually made tea with lavender. So same with these oils. If you're seeing all, all of these essential oils and you're like, wow, I actually have heard of these teas. You can, if you can ingest the oil, if you're using oils, you can ingest, you could use them in your tea. Um, you can also like find lavender tea. You could go outside, and pick some fresh lavender and uh, consume it that way. All right, our sixth chakra. This is the stage of adolescence. So this is like a pretty powerful time in life where we're recognizing patterns. Um, we're able to broaden our scope of perception. So that means that it's, it's around the time where uh, this might be the time in life where you may remember having like nightmares or maybe this is the time in life where like you have a dream and then you go about your day and like that whatever happened to that dream is happening in your day. Like this is the time too that people tend to get like <clears throat> into um like like or at least for me. I mean, I, I remember this was a time in my life where I was like, really amused with candles and incense and you know i i think i i got a set of tarot cards uh i was really like in tune with with something being deeper than what i've been seeing throughout my life so far so with that set of the locations the third eye the element is the mind and um this might even be a time in life where like you're tapped into a little bit more of uh, being guided or feeling guided and feeling like there's a little more visualization. And that can be scary. That can be something that's like, whoa, what the heck is happening? Am I, am I crazy? Am I, is what's all this witchy stuff that's going on? Um, the basic right to see and the sat, the shadow is illusion. So traumas are, what you see doesn't go with what you are told. This might happen where like you you go somewhere and um, you're you're told everything will be okay, but then maybe it's a very traumatic situation and there's a big family fight, or uh, it could be something like that. Uh, invalidation of intuition. Maybe you were told you're 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 coming to a place where you're like I had a dream about this. I don't want to go there. And uh, you're told you're crazy and you are forced to go anyway and maybe something bad does happen. So, or uh, you feel like you have an intuitive sense of something, but then you're, you're told that you're being, you're being a, a psycho or you're told that you that doesn't make sense. That's what happens with, um, with this, with the sixth chakra. Also, if, if there's a really like frightening environment. Maybe there's a war zone and there's a lot of violence that's going to cause abuse and trauma to the sixth chakra. An excess, an imbalance in excess is hallucinations, delusions, obsessions, uh, difficulty concentrating. If there's a deficiency, there will be insensitivity, poor vision, poor memory, difficulty seeing the future and really no imagination. Like not being able to see outside of the self really uh can't really see what's going on somebody might be saying hey like you are really miserable and you you know you might be like i'm fine everything's fine and uh, you know from the outside it might look like your your world is just crumbling but you're not seeing it 
This will show up as usually maybe physically headaches and vision problems. Notice as we move into the higher chakras, the physical stuff isn't really, uh, I mean, headaches and vision problems, you can get that from anything. That doesn't mean that there's a deficiency in your sixth chakra. Sixth chakra deficiencies are going to be way more uh, noticeable through these imbalances in the excessive and the deficient. So they're a little more deeper. It's a little more, uh, it's a little more like internal, really. When that sixth chakra is balanced, we're intuitive, perceptive, imaginative. Uh, we're able to think symbolically, meaning like I'm a little more in tune with, with tapping into what, what God or what nature or what my soul is trying to tell me. I can visualize things. I have an open mind. So the essential oils for this are our rosemary. I believe we saw rosemary before, but rosemary is the oil of of uh, knowledge and trans and transition. So she helps us trust in a higher intelligence. Um, we rosemary is going to help us understand that there is a more intelligent power than ourselves. Uh, she'll support us during a time of change but a time where we maybe might need a perspective change uh rosemary helps us stay rooted in true knowledge so in a greater higher truth rosemary is going to remind us that we're not the controller and it's okay to to step down it's okay to uh to recognize that there's something deeper out there Using rosemary, again, you can inhale it. You can use some drops on your head, your neck, forehead. You might want to blend that with a carrier oil. You can also internally take rosemary, but make sure that if you're using rosemary, you are uh, sure of the source of it. Lemongrass is a super cleansing oil. It's an oil of non-attachment, and it'll help us be discerning. So discernment without judgment, uh, that's a pretty hot topic that's that's been going around lately. Discernment without judgment, it'll help us get rid of that those judgy feelings of um, feeling like we're maybe being a little uh, like, like nasty to the people around us and actually discerning whether something is what we want to be involved in or not. Um, lemongrass can really cleanse the energy around us too so if you're feeling like maybe there were a lot of toxic people in your home or in your workplace and it's like causing nightmares or causing this inability to see things clearly lemongrass will help with that lemongrass will help really cleanse out that stuff so a few drops uh in a diffuser you could diffuse you could diffuse all of these oils actually you can inhale all of these oils uh this is a nice one to even put on the bottoms of your feet even put them in a spray bottle and like mist them around your home and stuff like that. You can take lemongrass internally. Uh, you may have even seen lemongrass tea, right? So it's a nice sort of check-in to, you are having some lemongrass tea to uh, <clears throat> maybe even go through the sixth chakra, uh, some reminders about the sixth chakra and uh, remind yourself of that before you, you have your lemongrass tea. Our seventh chakra. So this is Sahasara. Purpose is understanding. And this is developing in early adulthood and after. So uh, again, just because like <clears throat> the chakras are have developmental stages, that doesn't mean that they stop developing. Uh, that also doesn't mean that we can't come in and out of balance with them. But this is where we're going to develop wisdom. Um, really tap into intelligence connect to a higher power we have um a, we understand that there's spirituality we really uh are in a place of of understanding belief systems connection with the divine the color is violet and the, the location is the base of the crown of the head purpose is understanding the basic rate is to know and to learn the shadow is attachment Traumas and abuses are uh, 
forced religion or really like blind obedience. So not being allowed to think for, for yourself, uh, even being forced into a religion, being forced into something spiritual, saying that you're not allowed to ask questions, you have to be in this space. An excessive, um, an imbalance and excessiveness of the seventh chakra is going to be over intellectualization, confusion, disassociation of the body, spiritual addiction. Uh, deficiencies with that are spiritual cynicism, right? Learning difficulties, rigid belief systems. Uh, might even see a lot of lower greed and, and things like that. So the the lower chakras and the chakras will like, this is a workshop for another day, but the chakras will even, they really work with each other. And uh, if there are deficiencies in the seventh chakra, there may be excesses in the lower chakras. So this uh, person might be very like grounded of, they might be just totally connected to this world, identifying with this world. They might be that person, if they have a deficient seventh chakra, they might be that person that's like, oh, I am my watch. I am my brand new car. And they're not too connected to something higher. And this might show up um, as a coma, migraine, brain tumor, amnesia. Uh, that brain tumor might be something, again, these, these are, doesn't mean that every person with a brain tumor has a seventh chakra issue. Uh, but the seventh chakra stuff can get pretty heavy. So like, if, if this isn't an extreme, these things might start to uh, might start to manifest. On the other end of this, <laughs> the balance, when we're balanced in that seventh chakra, we are intelligent, thoughtful, aware, open-minded, able to sincerely question spirituality. Maybe we hear something in a class or in a spiritual group or a sangha and we're like, wow, I don't understand that. Uh, when we're balanced in the seventh chakra, we're able to speak to our teachers and say, frame the question in a in a really nice way that that opens the space for discussion and learning. Versus if we aren't balanced, we might like be that person that's like, this is all fake <laughs> or or whatever. There's kindness, compassion, loving. There's non judgment there, and there's a uh, wisdom and mastery, broad understanding frankincense is a really amazing oil for the seventh chakra so frankincense is some of the qualities are protection wisdom being spiritually open uh frankincense is also an oil that'll connect us with uh it helps us connect to our spiritual practice a little bit more so you can a really cool practice with frankincense is to put a drop or two on the crown of your head before you Pray or before you go uh, and chant your japa, uh, frankincense is also a really powerful oil to diffuse if you want a little bit more of like a sattvic environment, an environment that's a little bit more balanced and uh, that, that's facilitating a space for, for spiritual practices. Melissa is, uh, and uh, frankincense too, just to backtrack, you can also take that internally. You could put that under your tongue. There's a lot of uh, really powerful qualities to frankincense that that manifest when taken internally but again make sure that you've got uh got an oil that you that you can take in that way melissa is another really powerful <clears throat> oil uh she'll tap us into being spiritually connected also uh It'll assist us in in guidance by reconnecting with with God, by uplifting our soul, by uh, helping us when we feel weighed down by like the material world burdens. Melissa is an oil to work with when we feel like we we need to remember that we have a body, we're not a body, right? And you can again inhale it a uh, couple of drops on the forehead a couple of drops on um anywhere on the body really again melissa you can take internally too but make sure that you know the source and where you're getting it from sandalwood's a really beautiful one too i feel like also i'm talking like frankincense and sandalwood these are two oils that have just been so traditionally used in a lot of different uh 
rituals and a lot of really spiritual spaces and a lot of really powerful spaces. Sandal is going to help us with spiritual devotion, surrender, and being connected to a higher consciousness. So uh, if we ever feel like we're disconnected from God, if we feel like maybe there's an emptiness or maybe we feel like, gosh, I'm being so materialistic right now, Sandal will come in and remind us that we are spiritually connected. We are connected to a higher consciousness that it'll help us surrender um, it's a really beautiful uh, essential oil to use with any kind of prayer or meditation. Um, it reminds it really reminds us that of the importance of devotion also. So Stanzel was really beautiful in that way. Uh, again, same thing. You can inhale this. You could diffuse it. This is another one you can drop on the crown of your head before any of your practices to tap you into a little bit of a higher space. and. Uh, can also take this internally, but just be mindful of, of where you're getting your source from. Right. And thank you for, for being here. I did just include my website, my email address, my Instagram, all my social media really is just Lisa Bermudez. So um, for sure, check, check me out, do talk to me, <laughs> connect with me and uh, let me know if you have any questions ever i'm gonna stop the share now though and if anybody that's on live has any questions just let me know if not i know that was a lot of information <laughs> and this recording will be available to you uh later on today or tomorrow or at some point as well thank you davina thank you thanks for being here Glad you enjoyed it. This was definitely a lot of info also. So uh, <laughs> I, I totally understand that. And uh, you'll get the replay. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Amy, for being here too. I'm just going to stop the recording.